Today, I'm going to show you how to make directional masks in Unity and Unreal. Let's get started. Last week, we talked about position data, and I showed you this example of how to use the world position node to project a texture onto a mesh. Um, but there's a problem with this projection because it's just coming from one direction. And so it gets stretched and smeared down the sides. So today I'm gonna to show you how to create a directional mask so we can hide the stretched areas and just apply this texture in the areas where it looks good. So let's switch over to uh, a new shader here. And the first thing that we need in order to create a directional mask is the normal. So I'm gonna bring up the normal vector. And in our case, we're gonna be using the vertex normal, but it's also possible to use a, a pixel normal to make uh, per pixel masks instead of uh, masks per vertex. Okay, so here's our normal. And this is data that points in the direction that our model is facing. So if our model is facing up, uh, you can see that it's green here on the top. If our model is facing to the side, you can see that it's red over here. Uh, so our normal indicates the direction that our model is facing. But there's a problem with this data, and that is uh, it goes both positive and negative. So if I'm facing uh, to the right, you can see that it's positive, but if it's facing to the left, it's black over here, which means uh, it's negative data. And I don't want negative data in my mask, so in order to fix that, I'm gonna add an absolute node. And what absolute does, I think we've talked about this before, but it turns negative numbers positive. So you can see that here where it's red positive on this side, it's also going red or positive on this side. All right, the next thing that we need to do is sharpen this up a little bit because it's extremely blurry right now. The data goes very smoothly uh, all the way from one side to the other, but we need to increase the contrast of our mask. And so I'm gonna add a power node to raise this data to a power. And by default in Unity, our power is raised to a power of two here, you can see. And already it's starting to become a little bit more uh, focused or sharp. You can see that I have definite areas of green, blue, and red. Um, but I'm gonna raise this up a little bit more. I'm gonna raise it to a power of eight instead. And now you can see I've got nice focus. Let's go ahead and wire this into the fragment color and the emissive so that we can look at it in our main preview here. And now if we rotate this around, well actually, uh, if I rotate it around, it does nothing because I'm projecting it in, in world space. So let's switch our normal just temporarily to object space instead. So this time, uh, now the normals will be uh, more stuck to the surface instead of uh, relative to the world. So you can see I can now rotate around and see what the mask looks like from different angles. So I've got a red mask uh, coming from the left and right. I've got the blue mask coming from the front and the back. And I've got a green mask coming from the top and the bottom. So if I wanted to, I could stop here. I can use this power node to make these masks sharper and just come specifically from uh, the one direction that that they're pointing and if i add a split here at the end now i can isolate just the red mask and now i can project just from the sides or i could isolate just the green mask and this one will allow me to project just from the top or if I uh, isolate just the blue mac mask it'll allow me to project just from the front and the back so pretty cool I've got I've got a mask that is coming from uh, one specific direction and I can use this with my projected texture 
However, what I want to do today is go just a little bit further than this. And I want to show you how to make uh, masks that fill in the space. You can see here on the preview node of power, I've got this empty black space that I'm not using. And what I want to show you next is how to move these masks in so they fill in all of this empty space. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to take my power node here and I'm going to do a dot product with the power node and I'm just going to give it a dot product of one, one, one. And the results that's going to give me are uh, wherever my mask is solid, is a solid color, either red, green, or blue, it's going to be white. And where it's uh, a black color, it's going to be black. So now you can see uh, I've kind of got the black and white version of this here. Now, if I want the masks to come all the way to the edge, what I can do is take the result of this power and divide it by the result of the dot product. And so I'm going to wire this the result of this dot product here into uh, the B socket of my divide. And what that's allowed me to do is get a mask where each of the each of the directions of the mask come right to the edge of the directions of the other two masks. So I've filled in the gaps and I'm able to create a mask that goes right to the edge. And again, I can use this power node here uh, to control how sharp these edges are. So if I want one that's maybe a little bit blurrier, I can set uh, my power node to five. And now I've got a little bit more blending. So let's, let's connect this into um, the base color and emissive so that we can see it uh, on our main preview here. So now you can see that I've got these, these masks that are a little bit more square and they come right to the edges of each other and meet there. And then they have these kind of blending zones and I'm able to control how blurry or sharp the masks are uh, by using uh, this power node here. I can raise it to a power. If I want them to be really sharp, I could raise it to something like 64. And now my each of my masks comes right up and butts up against uh, the other two masks. So I've got these very defined and specific zones uh, of, of projection. So now what I can do is I can take these masks so here I've got my result coming out of my divide node. I'm going to wire that into my split. And now I can use, uh, as I said before, I can use green for projecting from the top, blue for projecting from the front and back, and red for projecting from the sides. So now if we go back to uh, this example that we were using from last week, uh, I'm projecting the texture. In this case, I'm projecting the texture from the top. Um, because I'm using the X and Z components of my position. So I'm just going to copy these nodes and paste them into my, uh, my projection shader here. So I'll open this up and let's wire our the result of our texture into our uh, base color and emissive. And now, uh, once again, I've got the texture projected but it's smearing down the sides. So like I said, because I'm projecting from X and Z, I'm using a top projection. So if I want to mask out that top projection, I need to use green. So here I'm going to take uh, the result of my projected texture and I'm going to add a multiply node. And then I'm going to multiply uh, my projected texture by the green channel of my mask. So uh, wherever uh, it's the top or bottom, uh, you're going to get white from this mask and everywhere else we're going to get black. So if I then wire the result of this into my master stack, now what we're going to see is I'm projecting the texture only from the top and the bottom. And everywhere else I've masked it out so that it's black. So I've got my projected texture showing up where it's not stretched, um, but where it is stretched, I've been able to mask out those areas so the stretching doesn't show. 
Uh, these edges are kind of sharp for what I need. And so I'm going to lower this down to something more like a power of eight. Now you can see that it has a nice, uh, uh, a nice fade out here as it gets toward the edges. Okay, so that's how you make a directional mask in Unity. Let's switch over to Unreal and I'll show you how to do it there. All right, so here we are in Unreal and you can see that I'm doing something very similar in Unreal than that I did in Unity. So here is my vertex normal coming in and you can see that it's the vertex normal in world space. And once again, I take the absolute value of the world normal so that I get rid of the, the negative values of my normals. Then I have a power node, and in this case, I'm raising it to a power of eight. And again, this is controlling the sharpness of my mask. And then just like I did in Unity, I'm taking the dot product of uh, this power node here uh, and dotting the values with uh, one, one, one. So if we wire this into base color, uh, you can see once again, I'm getting white uh, where my mask is a solid and I'm getting black where it's not. Uh, let's just wire this in temporarily to take a look. So uh, you can see here that I'm getting the, um, the masks coming from the direction. Then I take the dot product of that and I divide my original uh, mask value uh, by the dot product of it so that I can make those directional masks come right to the edges of each other. All right, then I'm able to use the split component node here uh, to break the masks into their individual directions. So um, it's a little bit different in Unreal because uh, the directions are, uh, because Unreal is Z up. And so you can see that the uh, up and down directional masks uh, are blue in this case. And then uh, the Y direction is green and the X direction is red. So here is the projection that I'm doing with my texture. And let's take a look at that. So you can see I'm projecting my texture from the top down, just like I did in Unity. And I'm doing that because I'm using the uh, X and Y values of the absolute world position, like we talked about last week. Um, but as I showed before, we're getting this stretching. And so we need to take uh, the the blue channel here, uh, which in the case of Unreal is the top and the bottom, and multiply our mask, uh, multiply our texture by our top and bottom directional mask, which is what I'm doing here. So I'm going to wire the result of this multiply in, and now you can see that I've masked it out, and I'm only projecting the texture now in the top and the bottom. And on the sides here, uh, where the stretching is happening, we're masking it out so we're not getting uh, that stretching. All right, now the next thing that you might be asking is, well, what if I wanna project from the top and I also wanna project from the side and I also wanna project from the front? Well, that is called triplanar projection where you're projecting your texture from the top and the side and the front. And it's a fairly common technique that we do uh, when we don't wanna use the UV coordinates on our model to apply a texture. We can just use the model's normals and position data to project a texture onto the model. This is a really cool technique and we're not gonna talk about it today. I'm gonna to save uh, the triplanar projection um, explanation for next week when we can spend a little bit more time. Now that we've talked about how to project our texture and also how to mask the texture uh, based on the direction of the projection, we have these two elements in place and we're ready to talk now about how to project in three directions at once. So you can see we're kind of building up our complexity. We started out with just position and then we talked about masking based on the normal. And then next week, we're gonna talk about uh, how to project in all three directions and create triplanar projection. And also gonna explain uh, what kinds of things triplanar projection can be used for. So I hope you come back next week and look forward to sharing that with you. 
I just want to take a minute here at the end to thank you guys. I really appreciate each week you coming back to watch my videos, to make comments, and support my channel. It's really fun for me to make these videos for you, and I appreciate, I appreciate your interest in learning and your support and trust in me uh, to teach you useful things for how to create shaders and materials in Unreal and Unity. So thanks again, and I look forward to talking to you again next week.